these like modern basses are so well made, but it's all about boom and blend. The permanent solo strings, the spiral core, the fingerboard camber, all these things are just very different than what I had been doing. I want to thank Nick Lloyd for the use of this instrument that he made only a month ago. What's going on? It's Jason Heath, and I'm back home after a week at the 2023 International Society of Basses Convention, the first time we've gotten together in four years. So expect content from this episode here on the channel. And today we're talking with Nick Lloyd, the wonderful bass maker who's been on this channel before, about this bench copy he made of Edgar Meyer's famous bass. This was inspired by Paul Coart's search for a very specific sound and extra bonus treat the night before Nick and I were set to talk about this. Gary Carr gets on stage with this very bass to play in a guest appearance with Victor Wooten and Steve Bailey. Very cool and I hope you enjoy. Last night we were watching Victor Wooten and Steve Bailey yeah. and they announced a special guest and out comes Gary Carr playing this bass. Yeah. which I had heard about, and it's a copy, very faithful copy of the bass that Edgar Meyer's been playing since he was... A teenager. Young, a teenager, a, yeah, right? Yeah, a teenager. So that was a super special moment here yeah. at ISB. It was great. Yeah, it was great to chat with you. Nice to, nice to and, see you. And we've never done anything for the podcast or video like in person, I don't think. No. But no, so it's our first video. Long overdue. Nice to meet yeah. you. <laughs> nice, to, nice to meet you too. <laughs> and so I, I got a chance to hear the bass last night, and so did a whole bunch of other people. And yeah. it's just such a such a cool bass and such a cool project too. Uh, so maybe just tell the tell the story of of this bass and how you how you came to uh, make it. Yeah. So um, the, the the album. So this is 25 years ago that this idea started for me. Uh, 1997, Uncommon Ritual, mm -hmm. that album came out. Mm -hmm. um, and we're the same age. Yep. I, I'm sure yep. you remember that, yep. that, that album well. I was studying violin making in Utah and bass making. And uh, I, that album just blew my socks off. And I, I, I kind of, you know, I, I put a flag up, like a, like a, like a goalpost that one day I would like to copy this instrument. It, you know, but I wanna build a bunch of basses first. You don't build four or five basses and attempt something like this. Yeah. So I set that flag up and just kept making instruments um, and I thought maybe I'll get an opportunity. Um, and then yeah, um, in 2020, I've been uh, in the height of COVID, um, I'd been, making basses for Paul Coart of P Punch Brothers and, and Hocktail. And uh, he liked my work, but he, he wanted something that I wasn't quite doing tonally. Mm -hmm. And so I just asked him, okay, what, what is it that you want? He says, well, I want, a, I want a copy of this bass that Edgar plays because it has great clarity and projection. Um, and also there's a lot of things different about this instrument that I wouldn't just sit down and create as a modern bass maker. I mean, this is, the original was built in 1769. So um, I, I, I wanted an opportunity to study the instrument, get all the measurements, and then reproduce it. And I felt like at that time, having built, built 54 basses, I was ready to build number 55. So this is the second copy that I've, that I've made of, of Edgar's bass. Uh, this is number 60, but yeah, number 55, uh, the first copy was for, for Paul Coart, and it turned out really well. Um, so I thought for the convention, I'll bring another one. I mean, such an iconic player, Edgar Meyer, that I wanted uh, everyone to, to see and, and feel um, a representation of what, what these guys are doing. And what's, so what's maybe unusual about this compared to what you've done with all those other bases, like because it's it's not necessarily what you would would have done without going through and copying and taking all those measurements, right? Right. Yeah. So you know, generally most bass players want to blend in a section, six, seven, eight bass players trying to sound like one giant bass. 
Well, this instrument is about projection over guitar and tabla and banjo and violin. and I mean, it's a solo model. Um, the biggest difference is that this uh, up here, the neck set, this is quite shallow. It's very short. It's called the overstand. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very low. And also, the bridge height, the fingerboard projection, is very low. And the instrument has solo strings, which a lot of solo bassists use. But these two things add up to a very tight experience with the strings, um, which adds a lot of, a lot of clarity. And uh, other things like the arching of the top is not an arching that, that I've been doing, and the arching of the back. It's a maple round back. It's a very full maple round back arch and a pretty shallow arch in the top. So, um, you know, these are, these are all things that have existed on Edgar's base, you know, for 250 years. Um, so it was, yeah, it was um, 180 degrees different from what I had been building. Yeah. Um, and also just to learn how Paul, because uh, Paul, Paul Cohort was kind of the genesis of, of, of doing this, how he hears the double bass in music um, and the clarity of it and, you know, not using much vibrato, if any. solo strings, the spiral core, the fingerboard camber, all these things are just very different than what I had been doing. And it was a matter of really listening to a player, a great player, and doing exactly what they wanted to. Because they, you know, up until then, he was like, I'm, these, uh, these like modern bassers are so well made, but it's all about boom and blend. Mm -hmm. And he didn't want boom and blend. Yeah. 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 Blue and blend. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you got and so you got the chance to really spend some time with with Edgar's bass, right? He like took yeah. it for it didn't I think I remember you saying that that was the longest Edgar had not had that bass in his hands like ever. Yeah. Yeah. So it was September 18th, 2020. Um, I drove down to Nashville and both those guys live live in live in Nashville and no one was on tour. There were no yeah. gigs and there was no hang. Um, so I asked Paul, could you get Edgar's bass over at your house and I'll wear mask and gloves and he wears mask and gloves and I will take photos and tracings and measurement and I spent eight hours at Paul's house just geeking out, you know, and, and assembling all the, the information I needed to copy the instrument physically. But then also I got to hear Paul play the bass a foot from my, from my, from my face, you know. Um, and just all day playing and measuring. And then when that was finished, about 7 p.m., uh, Paul and I took the bass back to Edgar's house, and we had a little visit, you know, in the, in the driveway, you know, standing seven feet apart with masks. Um, but yeah, Edgar said, that's a, that's, that's a long time <laughs> to be without my bass. Uh, so I was, I was just really grateful for that opportunity. And, uh, and yeah, it, it, it worked out well. Well, I've, I have some memories, this is going back 20 years uh, ago, of, of Edgar Meyer, when he comes to town, he has one of the bass players in the section play his bass and listen in the hall. So I have these memories okay. of being in Memphis, Tennessee, playing on that bass and just like the, how different that experience was compared to my, you know, blending, booming jack stat or whatever I was playing on at the time. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah, it's such a, so how, how cool to, it's, it's just interesting because you think we all play bass, maybe we all want the same thing. Well, maybe not, you know. No, not at all. And also, the, there's other, other subtle things. You know, I, the first bass I made for Paul, I met with Edgar after a concert uh, at IU, he was on tour with Zakir Hussein and Bella Fleck, and, and afterwards, we're hanging out in his, his dressing room, and he, he played this bass I made, and he said, this is, this is lovely, and, and, um, and I said, yeah, Paul's looking for something with more clarity, so he just gives me his bow and his bass, and now I'm playing, um, I'm playing in front of him, my ride's here. <laughs> and, uh, um, 
And, I, and that's when I realized, not just the sound of, of the bass, but you know, his stick, he keeps it super tight mm -hmm. with this violin rosin. Mm -hmm. And in many ways, I, I felt like I was eight years old and I'd never played the double bass before because here's this whole setup and experience that was very foreign. Um, you know, the tight strings and the tight bow and the clean rosin sound is just popping out of the instrument. Um, but wow, it was um, tonally very, very different. Um, and even for solo, other solo models that I've played, um, this is hyper focused with a lot of projection, and and that's was like okay, I I've, I need to I need more than you know 20 minutes in a green room with with this instrument. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's uh, clarity versus ringing was was how how Paul described um, most most folks are building ringing bases, and he wanted clarity. To, to put it down into, into two words, yeah. That's that's so cool. Yeah, I remember that the super tight bows and Edgar and I remember putting that bow on the string and playing and thinking, I kind of sound like Edgar Meyer. I don't sound as good as Edgar Meyer, yeah. but just all those characteristics that, um, that yeah, it's just that one of the fascinating things about the bass. I am used to that blending, booming, you know, uh, sticky rosin kind of, kind of experience and testing out a bass and it's just, it, how cool, yeah, yeah but you really, depending on what you're doing, especially with what Paul's doing or, or Edgar or other artists that explore that kind of territory, it, it makes sense that they need something different to do the job. And then as I went down this, this rabbit hole of <clears throat> you know, this, this different sound and this different setup, um, even a subtle thing of some of these, some of these players, they've got in-ear monitors. So you've got a tiny speaker next to your eardrum if you're using pops, <laughs> that sound in, in an ear, in ear monitor is, I mean, it's like a thousand cats. It's, it's not subtle at all. So just having a clean rosin for, you know, for that experience makes a huge difference for the band. Um, and you know, it's like, they don't talk about that stuff at conservatories, but no. it's like, that's, you know, for some of these players, they're, 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 they're doing that live, that live stage setup. So it's like, yeah, get a fresh rehair and get some Bernadelle. Uh, blue Bernadelle is the, the rosin that, that, that Paul's using and that Edgar's using. Right. But, um, but yeah. But how cool, I mean, I, it's, it, I love your bases. And it's so cool to see, you know, uh, exploring something different for this, this specific player. And, and it was so cool to actually hear this bass last night and, uh, that up on stage in front of everybody it's just it was awesome yeah that was it was such a treat and to see gary here yeah. and, and and playing with with steve and 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 victor i mean that you know it's uh it's wonderful to be in person again yeah and it's it's just you know gary wanted to come hang mm -hmm. and then steve was like would you please join us for you know one tune so you know uh here comes gary walking over to my booth and he's like i heard you've got a solo tuned bass it's 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 loud and and beautiful i was like wow like, okay here we are isb is in full swing so a wonderful night yeah and we sure. got to hear gary carr not only play your bass but improvise for the first time yeah ever at age 80 or slightly over 80 sorry gary if we yeah. that wrong and and up on stage in front of everybody on this bass yeah I, I, he was uh yeah he told me it's the first time i've i've done improvisation which blew me away. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he did. He did. He played wonderfully. Great. Mm -hmm. 